Yes, Dennis Rodman is in Singapore because the president of the United States is in Singapore to meet the North Korean <laughs> dictator Kim Jong-un in Singapore. All of which makes me feel like I'm drinking ayahuasca, which is a ceremonial bowl of stuff. You vomit up your soul. Look that up if you don't get it. Anyway, it's a delusional time we live in right now, but let's go to the videotape and find out what actually happened last night. His way to Singapore. There he is right now. Good to see you again, my friend. Dennis, can you hear me? How are you doing, guys? I remember you saying it. Let me ask you it's something. Amazing. Does Kim it's understand amazing. English, Dennis? It's, no, it's, no, it was amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. When I said those things, when I said those damn things, when I went back home, I got so many death threats. I got so many death threats when I was sitting there protecting everything. And I believed in North Korea. And when I went home, I couldn't even go home. I couldn't even go home. I had to hide out for 30 days. I couldn't even go home. But I kept my head up high, brother. I knew things were going to change. I knew it. I, I was the only one. I never had no one to hear me. I didn't know one had to see me. But I took those bullets. I took all that. I took everything. Everyone came at me, and I'm still standing. And today is a great day for everybody. Singapore, Tokyo, China, everything. It's a great day. You sounded like Ric Flair. <laughs> I'm bringing back to Greensboro, North Carolina. Brother. Yeah, at what point did it become appropriate to laugh? I was unsure, so I covered my face. I feel like laughter is the only sane response in these times we live in now. Because the crazy thing about this, the craziest thing about this was that after that segment, James Clapper, former noted national intelligence officer, was asked about Dennis Rodman, and he pointed out that Dennis Rodman is the foremost authority on the dictator in question. This is real. All of this is crazy, but it is real in the sense that Dennis Rodman has insight into him that no one else does. All right, so I think there are a couple of levels of this that are interesting. Number one, Dennis Rodman believes that he is ushering in an era of world <laughs> peace, right? Like, if you watch that, the importance that he feels in the role of creating this, he feels so vindicated because he really thinks that this is a step toward peace. And he says he believes in North Korea. And I, I don't even have time to, like, entertain what it means to believe in North Korea. It, 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 he sounds, from the Hulk Hogan-esque brother yes. to the Ric Flair-ness you pointed out, it sounds like he is doing, like, a pro wrestling shoot. Yes. But I think you're right. I think this is just authentically how he feels. No, 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 no. He believes that, like, he's made good in his life in this world, like, by doing this. This is his, going to be his lasting contribution, which is to world peace. But this is also a statement to the weirdness of being quasi-famous and where it might take you, right? So you never, <laughs> like, like, because Kim Jong-un was a fan of the Bulls, and that's how he got to be yes, a fan of Dennis Rodman. And so you never know who's watching, right? And, like, me and you, we try to parlay that into, like, backstage at shows. Like, we've yes. been back... We've been Successfully. Right, we have successfully been backstage at some cool shows because people have watched us on television and therefore like what we do. Dennis Rodman <laughs> parlayed that into a trip to North Korea. Right? Like, like, <laughs> it's like, more like, like, responsibility right, than right, any human right, should this have. This is so bizarre as to what fame is. People would just offer you whatever it is that they have. And in this case, what that dude had was North Korea.